brown algae so as we have already seen brown algae belongs to phyophyceae uh, that in turn belongs to heterocontophyta alternatively known as traminopiles of uh, uh, super kingdom chrome alveolata and kingdom chromista we have covered all these things in case you missed out please check out the earlier videos on uh, uh, the introduction of the chrome alveolata super kingdom and the chromista so phylogenetically brown algae is very much related to alveolata uh, like plasmodium you know the causative agent of the malaria and toxoplasma gondii and also diatoms and dinoflagellates all of these belongs to the chrome alveolata supergroup so please check out that video as well in case you missed out so the brown algae it's brown you see uh, because of the accessory pigment you see so and if you look at that uh, uh, the phylogeny of this group of uh, brown algae you can see that there are several lineages and uh, most important lineages are all monophyletic so uh, you know it's well resolved the, the phylogeny and uh, whatever uh, resolved or not resolved that all depends upon the conflict between traditional uh, morphology based taxonomy and molecular taxonomy if there is a lot of conflict then what the dna sequence reveals the history and that story might be different from what the traditional taxonomist was saying right but in in the case of brown algae that kind of uh, uh, you know conflicts are pretty rare you can see most of these are very well resolved uh, you know distinct uh, clades so what we name as you know the few kale for example are monophyletic so most important clades of this brown algae uh, let us forget about the the rank you know is it class or uh, division or subclass or you know so all these things are arbitrary but if you look at the groups named group which are all monophyletic the most important group is fucales you know fucus the very famous brown algae fucus belongs to fucales and also sargassum and turbinaria two very important seaweeds of the indian coast you know the sargassum you can see everywhere so as turbin turbinaria especially found in the south southern coast of the Tamil Nadu, you can find the turbinaria or nata, you know, and of course fucus. So fucales is a very important uh, group. Uh, next important group is laminariales. So laminariales, the name comes from laminaria. You know, it is basically a, a lam, you know, laminaria. That name, the Latin, is because of the blade-like front structure. You know, it has got a blade-like front. Uh, you know, so it's basically flattened fronts. So, uh, you know, the laminariales uh, include a large number of uh, kelp, you know, very large seaweed, some of the largest seaweed in the world. Of course, the largest seaweed in the world is also a kelp, you know, macrocystis periphera, which can go up to 50 meters, just one front. But if you look the clonal colony of it, so it can go to thousands of hectares. So the, the largest living organism on the planet Earth, including all kinds of animals and plants, all included, it's this particular organism, you know, the, the Macrocystis pyrifera, which is uh, a laminarials, a member of laminarials. Postelsia, which is sea palm, Undaria, uh, wakame, that is a J famous Japanese food. Wakame is from Undaria, Pinatifida, Saccharina, Japonica, the Kombu, you know, Macrocystis all belongs to laminarials. It's a group of a, a, a very large group of a large seaweed, you know, the brown seaweeds. And ectocarpales, ectocarpus belongs to that particular, uh, you know, the group. And of course, ectocarpales include a large number of uh, other brown seaweeds as well. Some of these are economically important as well right and also uh, dictyotales where padina belongs to padina is a calcareous algae uh, the only calcareous uh, you know uh, uh, and encrusting algae is this padina uh, which which has got typical silicate and calcium carbonate uh, you know uh, deposits on on its cell wall and that's why it looks a little bit thicker you know corticated cells so this is a picture from kanyakumari coast in tamil nadu you can see that it's a sargassum illicifolium you know, and the sargassum Zangiae too. Zangiae is basically earlier reported only in China that our team here in Central University of Punjab in Bhatinda, we could able to prove that it is basically the Chinese uh, Zangiae that has been, uh, you know, invaded to the Indian coast, uh, right? So that is what uh, the sargassum. So sargassum, if you look at here, the sargassum is a very large uh, uh, kind of a uh, brown algae of course uh, the cell the, the size of the thallus is really large it can go up to five meters and if you look at here the stipe this this kind of structure is called stipe 
you know and uh, the blades you can see and uh, interestingly it also has got this kind of uh, vesicles in it you know it, these are gas filled vesicle called pneumatophores and what kind of gas is that it's co2 carbon dioxide and what is the function of this gas filled uh, vesicles if you ever learned swimming you know th there are a lot of floaters right that helps you to stay float you know so these floaters are known as buoy so buoys are found everywhere in the port if you ever go to a shipping port you can see buoys floating rafts and floating you know uh, that shows you the direction for the ships to anchor so the function of pneumatosis is exactly same it helps the algae to stay afloat so what is the point of staying afloat what's the problem if it actually sinks down because as i told you that uh, you know deep inside our ocean are pitch dark there is no photosynthesis happening you know the light cannot penetrate so staying afloat has got its own advantage in ocean system and that is the reason that these giant algae have caught this pneumatosis the gas filled uh, vesicles you can see it the, this is what you know and the texture is also very leathery this uh, most of this brown algae especially the kelp if you touch it you can feel that it's something like leather and it's very very thick you know so it's because of the fucoida and fucoida is a, a sulfated polysaccharide on the on the cells of this algae so this is how uh, the laminaria typical structure of laminaria which is found almost everywhere in in the world's oceans and it has got a root like structure called hold fast and that is uh, you know very thickly adhered to the the substrata like rocks you know or concrete also you know tetrahedral uh, concrete uh, uh, breakwaters that we uh, we actually put on the coastline you know to prevent the uh, the wave action on the shore or, and uh, the coastal erosion so those concrete substrata is an excellent uh, substrata for the growth of this laminaria and other uh, large brown seaweeds so this root like structure the whole fast allows this algae to uh, you know to actually anchor into the substrata you know and also to 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 grow attached to this substrata especially on the intertidal region where the wave action is very strong so you really need a, a strong grip and strong hold you know otherwise you cannot survive it then comes this term like structure called stipe you know and uh, finally this is called blade this is the general structure of any uh, you know members of the kelp family so some other members include fucus diastichus with the pneumatocyst you know the fucus uh, fucale is named after this particular genus fuc fuc fucus uh, and padina i told you the padina is uh, very calcareous and uh, because of this calcium and siliceous deposit on its cell wall right and turbinaria ornata turbinaria ornata is um, uh, it's found in Indian coast in Tamil Nadu. You can see it. Uh, you know, if you ever go there, you can see that this beautiful algae is called Turbinaria ornata. Sea palm is another one. Uh, it's Postelsia palmiformis. So, sea palm is also uh, uh, it's an edible algae which is uh, being used uh, as part of the local culinary and gastronomy in a large number of countries, including Norway. So, this is a picture from Canada. So Canadian Victorian Island uh, in, um, uh, you know, uh, near Vancouver is where I took this picture. I've been there a long time back in 2009. Uh, yes, Postelsia, palm, sea palm. Giant kelp, I told you this is a picture of me. I've taken this picture uh, from uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium. They have this giant kelp inside their aquarial tank, you know, where the Stanford University's Marine Center is also based at. So Macrocystis pyrifera is the largest algae in the world and the largest living organism is also it all depends on how you call a largest uh, you know living organism so it's a clonal colony is included then yes giant kelp is the largest because it can grow thousands of hectares uh, you know of the ocean so wakame is a very famous uh, algae the brown algae which is used it's a laminarials which is used uh, as an edible algae you know, it's Undaria. Undaria pinnatifida is the scientific name of the wakame. It's a, it's a Japanese food algae, you know. It's used for uh, making dashi, that is basically soup in, in Japanese, uh, you know, uh, culinary. Kombu is another very famous uh, algae, edible algae in Japan uh, and also the, the Japanese restaurant all around the world, as well as in South America, especially Peru, Chile and Brazil. Kombu is uh, used 
you know so kombu is saccharina japonica earlier it was called laminaria but uh, now we know that it's not really laminaria it, it it's it, the the right genus of kombu is saccharina you know and the name comes from the sugar it has got lots of sugar in it mannitol especially mannitol containing uh, sweet you know sugar so that is why it's called saccharina japonica so brown algae the 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 very interesting characteristics are all non brown algae i would say most you know there might be some exceptions which i i don't know but exclusively marine is a defining character of the brown algae you know all the non species of the brown are or most of the brown algae are marine you know that's very interesting and the accessory pigment is fucoxanthin so that is why it's typically it's brown in color uh, because this accessory pigment mask the underlying chlorophyll you know in the in the chloroplast so fucoxanthin is what it gives typical brownish color and it also has sulfated polysaccharide fucoidin and that is the reason that these there are large number of uh, edible algae in the brown algae or because of this fucoidin gives a very a distinct uh, taste you know fucoidin gives you a, a kind of a savory uh, and umami kind of taste umami is the, the meaty flavor that you get with this particular uh, ingredient sulfated polysaccharide and the life cycle or life history of the brown algae is biphasic just like the green algae not like the red algal triphasic which we discussed discussed and of course just like green algae it also has got motile spores and uh, the fertilization is usually external not internal unlike the the red algae you know and most are sporophyte dominant not gametophyte dominant you know these are sporophyte dominant just like tracheophytes uh, the terrestrial plant with the uh, uh, xylem and phloem you know the tracheophytes which are also sporophyte dominant usually in land plants the angiosperms you can see that the gametophyte is microscopic just like that the brown algae's life cycle is also exactly same you know and uh, bioprospecting yeah there are a lot of applications for this uh, the the brown algae many brown algal genera like sargassum and turbinary are used for commercial production of alginate that is alginic acid you know and uh, of course in in india also we have got several companies uh, especially near uh, chennai and bangalore which are actually used for uh, the you know cultivation of this alginic acid and what is the commercial application of this alginic acid it's used in batteries you know lithium ion battery and uh, especially with the advent of the uh, the electric car the demand is going up day by day and also for mannitol mannitol is a it's a sweetener it's a natural sweetener uh, you know the the sugar free sweetener which doesn't have any side effects unlike uh, aspartame right uh, the, those are synthetic but this is actually a natural uh, sweetener like stevia you know so this is mannitol is also you, uh, it's a commercially important product from the brown algae and a number of brown seaweeds are edible so some examples from the laminarials include wakame which is undaria pinnatifida kombu saccharina japonica sugar kelp saccharina latissima sea palm postelsia palmiformis all these are examples from the laminarials so by the way the picture here is the kombu dashi you know this is how the kombu is being served in uh, if you ever go to the japanese restaurant you know it is something like a, a soup but you can eat also you know and uh, it, the, the taste is very nice and meaty and uh, you can see that it doesn't look like brownish but it's rather green the reason is that it's basically hot right so if you dip this brown or even red algae into a as a small bowl with a, a warm water it instantly changes the color you can you can see that in in your home you can you can take out the, the algae and ch check it out it's very exciting the reason is that the accessory pigment that masks the the true color of the chlorophyll gets denatured these pigments get denatured fucoxanthin for example in the in the case of brown algae you know or phycoerythrin in the case of red algae gets denatured uh, exposing what is underlying which is uh, nothing but chlorophyll and that's why the color is greenish you know so this is really exciting coming to fucales the two most important edible algae are hijiki or hiziki which is sargassum fusiforme you know it's edible algae and bladder rack bladder rack is uh, it's a edible algae especially in scandinavian countries as well as in the uk you know especially in the northern uk the scotland uh, bladder rack is fucus vesiculus 
right and ectocarpels also has got one very famous member that is called mozuku you know mozuku is uh, the japanese uh, uh, mozuku means it's uh, you know the cladosiphon okamuranus so mozuku is basically cultivated in okinawa that is down south uh, it's a tropical island uh, you know so south of the the, the japan so the more southernmost island of japan is called okinawa right where a very big american base is based at so okinawa has uh, this mozuku farms and mozuku is uh, nothing but cladosiphon which is which belongs to uh, ectocarpels coming to the life cycle uh, the the saccharina uh, life history or life cycle which belongs to laminarials so most of the members of the laminarials have kind of similar life cycle which is heteromorphic alteration so basically uh, the alternation of generation is heteromorphic that means that uh, the two phase the sporophyte and gametophyte has got different uh, morphological form you know external morphology is dissimilar that is what heteromorphic alternation means and it's dioecious dioecious means uh, you know it is basically males and females are separate separate plants not the same plant you know and the sporophyte dominant just like trachophytes so the dominant what you see as and what you call it as the thalli or plant is basically the sporophyte and gametophytes are microscopic just like in the case of uh, angiosperm and the fertilization is external you know not internal fertilization unlike most of these angiosperm you know, the, the fertilization happens external that means in the ocean that is where the fertilization happens so uh, you know whenever there is a external fertilization case of algae so algal gametes are phototactic and these are actively swimming you know exception i told you in the case of red algae uh, non motile but in that case uh, fertilization is not external so it's all about adaptation which i already explained to you in this class Undaria, uh, Undaria pinnatifida, you know, it, which is a, an edible algae, right? Wakame. So, Undaria life cycle, if you look, the, the life cycle is sporophyte and gametophyte and the sporophyte dominant, which is very similar to the earlier, uh, you know, the life cycle of the saccharina. We will see once once again the saccharina life cycle. So, here, this is basically the whole fast type and blade. Uh, the laminarials, you know, or most of uh, the members of laminarials have this kind of uh, morphology. So the blade has got uh, some sections which are, uh, you know, fertile sections. Uh, the reproductive structures called sori. Sori is plural. Sorus is singular. So inside sori, there are several sporophytes. You know, the sporophytes get matured, uh, which releases the so-called zoo spores. Zoo means swimming, actively swimming. Right, these are flagellate. Of course, these are biflagellate uh, because remember bicond. All these are belongs to the biconta, right? So it is biflagellate, and uh, these are basically phototactic. You see, so usually the zoo spore, which is released by the sporophytes, are negatively phototactic. Phototactic. The reason is that it need not go to the sea surface, but rather it needs to go to the substrata because it needs to grow attached to a substrata like shell or rock, you know, or a pebble. So those are the substrata. So it needs to go swim away from the sunlight, away from the sun. So that means sea floor. So that is an adaptation too. So as you can see that they sporophyte the, the, the biflagellate zoo spores swim towards the sea you know see bad and then grow attached on a suitable substrata into uh, uh, you know uh, males and females you see so that is what so in this uh, case so uh, maturation of the sporophyte into zoo spore is a reductive division so the meiosis is happening here so it's haploid sporophyte is haploid but of course the spores are uh, you know uh, sporophyte is deployed okay to an sporophyte is deployed but the spores are haploid right so this meiosis is where sex determination is happening so some zoospores are male some zoospores are female so male zoospores develops into male uh, microgametophyte so both female and male gametophytes are microscopic you know and that is why this one is a heteromorphic alternation of the generation right so these gametophyte the microscopic gametophyte male and female you know releases the respective uh, you know gametes uh, uh, you know it could be uh, you know the ovum or uh, sperm right so male and female gametes 
and you can see that the fertilization happens to form the zygote and this zygote develops back into the sporophyte so the sporophyte doesn't have any sex no gender right so this is how the life cycle of the saccharina and uh, undere is also quite similar as you can see that undere is sporophyte so in which zoospores are matured and it get released so the formation of zoospore is meiotic uh, division which is reductive cell division so that is why from diploid zoospores become haploid and also sex determining uh, step so some of the zoospores are male some are female so male zoospores develops into a male microgametophyte so as the females develops into female microgametophyte and these microgametophyte releases the respective you know the gametes so gametophyte releases gametes isn't it so these gametes are male and female gametes then it uh, it fertilizes to form the zygote uh, you know of course zygote is uh, it's a uh, diploid isn't it and this zygote develops back into the sporophyte generation so that is the undaria life cycle in summary finally coming to sargassum sargassum is not laminarials but it belongs to fucales you know so the life cycle of uh, sargassum is very interesting it's just like human being you know it's it's, it's a it's a plant uh, you know analogous uh, analogy of the the, the animal fertilization isn't it? it's very interesting the life cycle so there are no alternation of generations just like us gametophyte dominant you know the the dominant uh, what you see is basically gametophyte the gametophyte is deployed fertilization is internal and you know just like human being why why i say the human being you can see that male and female gametophytes uh, releases the the spores you see so male releases the the sperm and uh, female releases the ovum right so the, it doesn't release out you see the fertilization is internal so basically the male uh, gametes which are actively swimming you know it is biflagellate and it actually enters into the female uh, structure the receptacle where it fertilizes you see it fertilizes the gametes fertilizes with the uh, the ovum inside and uh, you know that fertilization forms a zygote so zygote is also grows attached with the female gametophyte so inside the female gametophyte so after a maturation of the zygote so what will happen is that this zygotes get released uh, which is basically 2n you see and uh, this zygotes develops back into the respective gametophytes you see so only a uh, deployed phase of its life cycle is gamete just like human uh, life cycle you know only uh, um, only haploid phase so all the all the rest of the phases are deployed just like us you see only haploid phase of a human life cycle is the sperms or ovum isn't it germline cells uh, while vegetative cells are all deployed you know and the fertilization is internal i told you and uh, there is no alternation of generation no sporophyte stage yeah and most importantly sargassum uh, you don't have to rely on the sexual reproduction you see uh, the, the reason with the sexual reproduction is that uh, you know because of the crossing over and there are so many selection happening uh, at different stages there are a lot of variations you know uh, of course variation is adaptive strategy you see if you study in evolution you know evolutionary strategy so to to minimize this chance of this variation because this is a commercially cultivation for example the taste matters so for commercial production of the sargassum so uh, you know the the industries do not rely on the sexual reproduction but they rely on the fragmentation so fragmentation is asexual you know you just need a piece of the, the thallus so that can actually grow back to the, the parental size so that clone can be maintained for quite some time so that is how uh, you know usually the sargassum is being cultivated commercially yeah that's it for the, the brown algae and thanks for watching bye bye